Now, the other thing that we have to talk about is what happens to the electron. So you remember how I said that the NADH or FADH2 gives an electron to the electron transport chain. So it, um, the electron transport chain moves that electron from the first molecule to the next molecule to the ne next molecule and so on. But then what happens? What happens to that electron? If this, this thing has to give its electron to something, because if it doesn't, then it's stuck with an extra electron. And if it's stuck with an extra electron, it's not going to have room to accept the electron from the one before. So the one before is going to be stuck with its electron, and the whole system will get backed up. So what happens to this electron? Where does it go? Well, it turns out that this electron is going to be given to a molecule of oxygen. And, and the oxygen is going to grab that electron and grab some hydrogens and produce water. So this is why we need oxygen. This is why we breathe in oxygen, because oxygen is the final electron acceptor of the electron transport chain. What happens if we don't have enough oxygen? So what happens when you go running in the morning? You know, you're running a, you're running a marathon, and you start to breathe more heavily. You're breathing more heavily because your muscles aren't um, getting enough oxygen. What happens? Do you die? You don't die. Um, there's something else that can happen. Um, uh, eventually, if you don't get enough oxygen, yeah, you, you die. But, but there's, there's something that your cells can do for a while um, to, to keep things going. And actually, you know, there are some organisms, many, many species of bacteria, just don't even have the machinery to do the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. And so they just can't even use oxygen, even if it's available. So what happens then? What happens when, uh, what happens when there's no oxygen? Well, like I said, when there's no oxygen, the electron transport chain is going to back up. And when it backs up, that means that the NADH is not going to have any way of reverting to NAD. And the FADH isn't going to have any way of reverting to FAD. And so that means that we're going to run out of NAD and FAD. If we run out of NAD and FAD, then these reactions in the Krebs cycle can't happen. Uh, these, you know, these reactions that require NAD and FAD. So the Krebs cycle cannot occur if there's no oxygen. And so what happens then is that we're back to glycolysis. And what will happen then is that the pyruvic acid, instead of being sent to the bridge reaction, it's going to be sent to um, a set of reactions that people just sort of generically call fermentation. There's a whole different, there are a whole bunch of different kinds of fermentation. Um, and uh, fermentation is famous because, well, mostly because of its waste products. Um, many, for many people, their favorite kind of fermentation is the kind that produces as its waste products ethanol and carbon dioxide. So these waste products are what make beer bubbly, carbon dioxide, and alcoholic. Um, the kind of fermentation that our muscle cells do, we don't produce ethanol. If, if they did, everybody would always be exercising. Our muscle cells produce something called lactic acid. But the thing is, these are waste products. These, these are not why fermentation evolved. Um, the reason that fermentation evolved is that these reactions will also take an NADH and give us back an NAD. So they'll use up an NADH um, and give us back NAD. Now, giving us back NAD allows us to do glycolysis. Um, glycolysis requires NAD, and once we have NAD, then we can still get two ATPs per glucose. That's not as good as 36 or 38 ATPs per glucose, but it's better than nothing. Note that it doesn't let us do the Krebs cycle still, because we're still not reproducing F or regenerating FAD, but you wouldn't be wanting to do the Krebs cycle anyway, because what are you going to do? Just generate much, much more NADH and FADH2 that you end up having to deal with anyway. So, so in anaerobic respiration, and by anaerobic respiration, I mean glycolysis plus fermentation. In anaerobic respiration, you're still able to get energy out of the glucose. You're still able to to produce ATP using the energy in the glucose. So some species of bacteria, 
This is all they ever do. It's all they ever do is anaerobic respiration. But organisms that can do aerobic respiration and can generate 36 or 38 ATPs, they'll always do better. They'll grow faster, you know, they'll be more efficient because they're able to get much more energy out of the glucose. So, you know, that's it. That's, that's the way to um, understand glycolysis and the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain for an introductory level biology class. Um, you should be able to reproduce all these diagrams. I made them really messy, I'm sorry, um, but you should be able to reproduce these diagrams. The one for glycolysis and Krebs, the, uh, uh, and bridge, the one for Krebs, and you should be able to explain the electron transport chain. Uh, the way to study these things is to practice explaining them. Tell the story, say, them out, say, say these things out loud, draw the diagrams. If you just watch this video over and over again, if you just look at my diagrams over and over again, it's not going to stick in your head. The way to do it is to practice your knowledge, to explain it to somebody and answer their questions. Um, and if you can do that, then, uh, then that's, that's really the level of understanding that you need for most college-level intro bio courses.